Favorite subject. Who's going to answer that wrong? Hmm? I did recess. Recess? Uh, that doesn't count. Here it does. Recess is when you just get to read whatever textbook you want. Right? <laughs> get to go to the library and pick one off the shelf. There are some textbooks I want to read, but I'm not in here like that. You know the thing I always wanted to know? I haven't got around to. But I've wanted to know since I was I don't understand chemical bonding. There's whole books on chemical bonding. That seems a really interesting topic. Well, I think this book by Linus Pauling, the nature of the chemical bond, that's like this classic book on chemical bonding. But I would, it bugged me since high school. Like the very first time they tell us about orbitals and stuff, and I was like, this makes no sense to me. Where does that come from? And then I took, you know, college chemistry, and it still didn't make sense to me. And I took home mechanics in graduate school, and it still didn't make sense to me. And I'm like, maybe in the book on chemical bonding, I can finally understand what the crap they're talking about in freshman chemistry. <laughs> Did you see they got a picture or a video of the first chemical bond being formed ever? The, they, they have a video of it, like a high speed. Uh, yeah, like, and when I say first ever, I mean the first video ever. Yeah, the first video. Uh, and I was like, oh, they went back and <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, I don't remember. This is like a like a femtosecond uh, uh, electron microscopy. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if I've seen. When was, when was that? Was that a couple of years ago? No, it was within the last year. Oh, was it? Uh, I you know, met a guy in Minnesota who got hired who was a friend of the They they let few graduate students if you wanted, you could come sit. So back up. So when you when you go for an interview for a faculty, you um you go and you give like a graduate student. And then you go around and meet all the faculty members, and that's kind of interesting to see. But then you go and have a meeting where you have to give what they call the soft notes, which is usually slides, so it's kind of ironic. Where you have to present what your research is and what your proposal ideas are, like what you're going to do. And so they let some of the, they let a few graduate students who wanted to come sit in the back of the room in a corner. When they did the talk talk, so you could kind of see what it was about. So if you're interested in interviewing for faculty positions, you could sort of see what to do or what not to do. And so the guy that they ended up hiring was this guy who had some sort of microscopy stuff. I remember him talking about that as an idea of what we could do, but I don't remember. You know, I don't remember saying. So that's cool that they that someone done it. So. <laughs> All right, um, so let's have an opening prayer. I have enough, one more announcement. Anybody calling? Yeah, Jason. 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 Y
So hopefully you've been meeting with faculty and have, I think Dr. Hennigren said you had to meet with five people. I think that's the rule. So if you haven't done that, please do. And even if you think you know you're going to work for and your advisor already, you know, says they're going to take you on, please just go meet the other faculty anyway. It's a good opportunity, right? You're going to have people on your committee. You're going to have people um, that you, you know, see around. You're going to be around for at least a couple of years. So go meet them and chat with them. It's a good experience to do. So anyway, I wanted to give you guys heads about heads up about that. So it should just be a Google form. And likely what it'll be is, I haven't finished making it, but you put the name of the person and then you'll rank them. Uh, like you'll give them a 10 out of 10 is really want them. One out of 10 is like, okay, I could take them if I had to, but I really don't want to kind of thing. And put, you know, put you only who you're willing to work with on that. So most often, if you haven't uh, already heard this before, but I'll say it again, most often we get students as 10, faculty advisors as 10, and it's really easy to match. The problems are when we have someone who's not done a lot of due diligence, they only kind of went and talked to a couple of faculty and they didn't go back and talk to them again, and they haven't really worked it out. And they put, oh yeah, I want that guy eight, and then that faculty member doesn't know, and they put, they put your name down or they don't, right? So sort of on you to make sure that you've connected with faculty. And this year, I think hopefully you've all found someone um, or finding someone. There's lots of faculty looking and there's only a few of you this year. So you have opportunities. So, um, all right, any questions about that? Okay. We're all so, is that, we're ready for the weekend. Is that what's going on? So today is lecture five. So our, we're going to do a quick overview of analysis. We're going to do an example together, which is uh, flow and tube, which hopefully we're all familiar with, but we'll give it all out. And if we have time, we'll do another example, which is flow and gains. And I'll let that go ahead and just flow in and gains. Okay, so that's what we're going to do today. So, number one is overview of shell. <laughs> So if you remember in the very first lecture, I said that we need two things to write down in transportation. I said we need to know about the forces and how the forces and forces were related. And I said we need to write out down balance. I said all of the fluxes were of conserved quantities, momentum, energy, mass. So we could write down a balance equation, right? And we could use the take these flows, these fluxes of momentum, mass, and energy, and write down the equations to be able to kind of solve for things like velocity fields, temperature fields, and concentration. Okay, so today is the first day where we, we've got all of our fluxes. Now we can write down balances and start to solve for these fields, these velocity fields today, or temperature fields in a couple days. Okay, and um, we're going to start out with some simple uh, geometries. So we're only going to do 1D balances first. This is this helps us especially with fluid mechanics, which can get complicated with the tensorial nature. So we'll start out. We'll do these 1D balances for momentum and energy, and then we'll go back and revisit vectors and tensors a bit more, and some differential calculus, some, some uh, uh, three-dimensional. Vector calculus, and then we'll dive into the 
operations. Okay, so um, so I guess what I was going to say. So remember, I'll just put this up so you can see the notes. Recall, you know, uh, we needed call oh, we needed one force blocks relations. Okay, these we were called the constitutive laws. Okay, and then we need a balance equations. Okay, so we did this for a bond on this. Side. All right, and um, essentially what we're going to do, uh, I said this too, so our process will be. Um, let's see, conservation law plus the fluxes, and that is going to lead to a transport equation. Okay. This is usually like a, I mean, ODE or PE. Okay, and then that will lead to velocity, temperature, concentration, and fields. Okay, that's our solution. And these arrows in between, they're usually some math. Okay. I don't know, maybe this is just sort of a meta comment about this. Okay. So I've been trying to, to, to do notes for you. I hope by now you're you're um, getting your you know graduate school hopefully by now you're getting pretty good at the notes. I still have the notes I took in my graduate fluids and other classes and they're valuable to me. So I'm trying to help you make a nice set of notes so that hopefully they're valuable to you. So maybe they're not. She utilizes my notes. She uses them sometimes. So I think they're useful. Okay. Um, so the general principle for our balance here is okay. I don't know why I decided to span the, the force here, but we're going to have the sum of flows in to some region. So right now, in this case, it's going to be granted in line now. Molar, mole, five, seven, go on, mole, momentum, flow, k minus the momentum flows out. Okay, and in this case, we're also going to have body forces. These are like Sources and sinks kind of of momentum. If you want to think about it that way, force. And that we're going to set equal to zero. Okay. So in these 1D balances, we're going to only have stuff that are, you know, so for now, we're going to do 1D and we're going to be steady state. Okay. So we're going to limit ourselves to those. And this is the procedure for doing these kinds of problems. After this, I'll let them from here on out. So the procedure, the first thing we're going to do in these shell balances is we're going to identify the geometry okay, um, and the direction of transport. Okay, we'll talk about, we're going to go through each of these steps in detail. Okay, so I want you to kind of you have, a, you have a specific question, good, okay, we'll get to it. I'm just sort of laying out the procedure and then we're going to do it. Okay, the second thing is we're going to write down the balance for you. Okay, 
That's what I just put over there. That general principle, we're right down that. Okay, from three, we're going to take a limit as the shell thickness goes to zero. Okay, so we're going to write down this balance equation, and I guess for a thin shell, here I need to write down a shell. Okay. Take the limit as the shell thickness goes to zero. That's going to give us our transport thickness. So if you kind of look here, conservation law and fluxes, you know, I identify my geometry in the one direction that I care about. And then two is where I write down this conservation law and fluxes. Okay. Three, this is how I get to transport equations. Okay. So I'm going to take that limit to get to those transport equations. Okay. Four, sort of another piece of that, I need to identify boundary conditions. Okay, we're going to see that in three, when we do this limit, we're going to get an ODE. It's going to be a boundary value problem. So we need boundary conditions. Okay, so we're going to have to identify those from the physical circumstance that we're in. All right, we'll talk about that a little bit. Okay, and then number five is just math. Okay, so we're going to solve the ODE boundary value problem. Okay. So this often, in this case, in a simple case, this is often a separate unit radius. Okay. Usually, we'll put that down. Usually, oops. Separate. Okay. It's usually a second order differential equation and just What's that? What is BEP again? It's a BVP. Oh, BVP. So that's a boundary value problem. Yeah, good question. Thanks. Okay, so if that's, so I tried to just skip the 30,000 foot view, but I'll pause for a quick question if there's something I like said that's confusing, recognizing that we're going to do this process now in an example. So flow in a cylindrical or circular tube. All right, so let's do number one. Do I be a geometry? Okay, so by the way, you can follow along in the book with this. If I'm saying this in DSL 2.2, you're going to do this example too. So you can check it out. Okay, so I've got. Cylinder so here. All right. And we'll set up a coordinate system. Call that direction R, that direction Z. So Z will go down. We'll make this Z equals zero. We'll make this Z equals L. We'll make this point right there R equals zero. We'll make out there R equals big R. And we're going to assume that the flow direction is, is downward. Okay. So we'll assume the flow of that direction. So that's our geometry. And for these shell balances, it's that these are one dimensional. So we're making some relatively drastic simplifications of the transport. Okay. But what we recognize in pipe flow is that we have only a VZ component, right? So there's no VR, there's no V theta, there's only VZ. 
And that profile is only a function of the radius. So I'll write that one. This is going to be like VZ is equal to VZ of R. Okay. The R equals zero, the theta also equal to zero. Okay. So what this is telling us, okay, is that I care about the Z component and I care about momentum transport in the R direction. Okay. Remember when we had like our parallel plates, right? We had the flow is in this direction, but the momentum transport is in the other direction. That's the same thing here. We have momentum transport from, say, the wall to the center of the wall. Okay. So if you think about that, we're going to care about tau over z. Okay. And I was trying to think of a way to remember which order these are. Okay. Because I always forget. So I was trying to think of a mnemonic. So here's a mnemonic I can help with. And this is the Direction of the momentum transport. Okay, so I call that B okay, for direction. And then this is the component of the of the velocity vector. Okay, so I call that C. Okay, so like Dr. Components or whatever, to me that was easier to do. Right? So it's direction and component. Right, and so that works the same thing if you think about this as a stress. Okay, this direction would be the direction of the surface, okay, the unit normal of the surface, and then the component would be the force component of the stress. Okay, or this can be the momentum direction, the direction of momentum transport, and then the component of your transport. So that's what we have here in this case, right? We have the z component, okay, and we're doing it the momentum transport. I don't know if that helps remember, but that helps me remember this B and C for direction and time. Okay? So that's what we're, that's number one. I give you Questions about that? Yes? B theta? Yeah. Yeah, so theta would be uh, the direction about that axis down the middle, right? Spinning around here. So what that means is that there's no velocity curling around in the you know, vortex kind of thing, right? But the only velocity is straight here. Make sense? Right. Number two. Okay, is right balance. Equation on a thin shell. Okay, so we have this geometry, but we need to pick a shell to do a balance. Okay, and there's two keys to picking a shell. So the two keys are A is that the thin direction. Okay, needs to be the transport direction. Okay, so which which one is that for this case? R. Um, yep. Okay, so R is going to be that direction. I'll show you what this means here. Okay, the other key to picking our show is that we need to do a balance. On the uh, component, okay, the C component, this one right here, the C. Okay, so those are the two keys. That's why we need to identify them as step one, is because when we go to write down the balance, we need to make sure we draw the right shell to the right balance. And we can do the wrong shell. It's going gonna, it's gonna to give us our transport equation. It just won't be one that will give us anything valuable to solve, okay? And that often is one way that you set the problem up wrong, and then you start making stuff up at that point, right? Usually when you start wrong, you get confused, and then when you're confused, you start making, you know, silly mistakes, right? So this is the idea here, okay? So the thin shell that we're going to draw then, it's going to look like a cylinder, but it's going to be thin in the R direction. Okay, 
And then we're going to have this piece here that's going to come around outside. And I don't know if I can draw this very well. Uh, you guys can do this probably looks like. Uh, I don't know how to do it. I need to circle this one here. <laughs> Okay, so that cylinder, okay, you can think is inside of my tube here, all right? And I'm going to draw it where I have, this is my center axis here, okay, this is R, and then this guy here is R plus delta R. So that width is a delta R thickness, okay? So that's my gym direction, all right? But I still have this direction here, which is my z direction, right? So this length here is still L, okay? Then I go down my z direction. Okay, so the balance I'm going to write is then going to be zero equals in of the z momentum flow. Minus the sum of the out of the z momentum flow plus in this case my only body force that I have is gravity. Okay, I'm gonna have the weight of that fluid and gravity. Okay, so I want you to take a second. I want you to think about what these terms are gonna look like in this thin shell. Okay, so I want you to take a couple minutes. See if you can write down some of those terms. And then I'm going to erase this. I'm going to ask you what they are. And we'll kind of do it together. So it's a little bit or a little more weight while you all the math. Okay. So why don't you take three or four minutes? See if you can't write that momentum balance down. Think about how you get a momentum flow based on the fluxes that we talked about in class. Think about that for a second. Always. Give you a hand. Go back. I just turn the fall on my students then. It's supposed to be high to Why was it down? Okay. Well, like we three I see a lot of staring, but I don't see a lot of writing. I see Mark writing. I see Mark. I can't see your last name. How do I see your last name? Swanabelle. Swanabelle. So I can't, I always want to say that sh in it. It's Swanabelle. Yeah. Okay. All right. Ooh. 
Right. You guys remember doing balances of fluids? Remember those days? Mm -hmm. um, I fully failed as a teacher of fluids. This is very similar. It's a slightly different procedure. This is one dimensional. All right, who thinks they have an idea of one of the terms? What do you think? Make a guess. Don't embarrass yourself in front of nine people and all of you. It's not like anybody's watching. Yeah. Well, on the first day, we were done with equations. Uh, our expression is same momentum flow equals rho v v dotted with n a, and being a normal vector. Uh huh. So that's what I put in. So you have rho v v dot n a. So what is that expressing? Okay. What what's going on there? The flux dotted with the normal vector. Right. So I have a flux through an area. Right. So what over here are the different areas that I have? Where I could have momentum coming in and out of the shell. Inside to the outside. Yeah, I could have the inside, right? So I could have this, you know, inside tube. I could have momentum flowing into the shell there. Then I could have momentum flowing out of it there. So there's two. There's actually two more. What else could I have? The top and the bottom, right? So I could have stuff flowing in the top and then the bottom. Okay. So now this, we were talking about this, this was the convective flux, right? But there's two other terms in the flux, remember? There's this guy, tau, right? Which is our viscous stresses, or what do we think about? These two pieces made up the molecular uh, flux, right? This one comes from pressure, that one comes from shear forces, right? In our fluid. So you've got all three of these. So what we want to do is look at not just rho v v, right? We want to look at the entire total flux vector, right, times an area. And we could do this dot product and do that, but we actually have it even simpler than that because we can just think about what's the component of sigma of uh, theta here. Uh, that's not theta. B. Excuse me. Okay, up here times the area up there. And what's the component down here times the area? And here and here. Okay. So does that give a hint? Can you guys make a little progress from there? Can you pick one of those sides and see if you can write down the flux and the area on this side? Okay. Or maybe pick the top, you know, do a flux times an area. See if you can get that one. All right, there.
Right, do you think we have something? Should I pick on somebody? I saw you writing furiously again. What do you, which one have you been working on? Very furiously. Okay, well, okay, you've been writing, you were thinking. Um, top one, so yeah, we're working on the top one, okay. Very key down, so what's in that circle? Okay, got a circle, okay. And then the dimension going through that, that's going in the direction. Okay, so we have phi, it was in the z direction. So if I have this, you know, if I have a Answer I'm writing down. Which what are the what are the subscripts here on my key? For the top, we've got um, Z. Z Z, that's right, right? Because the first Z is the direction, right? So that you know that's the direction when I stood this. Okay, Z. And then this whole thing, the second one should be Z, because I'm doing the Z component of the root. It's easy, just that's right. Okay. Yeah. So can you explain how the direction Z there? Is it because we're looking at the very top of it? Yeah. So if I think, think of the unit normal of the surface. So the unit normal there, okay, you know, it is in the Z direction. I mean it's in the negative Z direction, yeah. but that'll come out when we do in my sap type sort of thing. Yes. And the reason that the component is really hits Z. That's right. The reason that's exactly right. The reason the component is because we only care about the z component of the velocity. If I had a vr going on, then I would also need to do a balance on vr, right? But that's why when I'm setting up my shell balance, when I set my shell, right, they make the thin direction here where the momentum transport is, okay? But I also need to include, you know, that piece there where z is going, okay? So that's the key. So that okay, all right. So we got that. So what's this area then that I have on the top? Area of the circle. So you can say pi r squared. Okay. So this is close. The area is a little bit wrong. So think about that. Over here we have a thin shell. So I have just this outer plane. So I don't actually have the whole circle. So what we need to do is subtract. The area of the inner part here. Okay, so I guess I highlighted the wrong thing. We need to subtract that part out, and we only want this part of the area. Okay, what I call the shell balance. So I actually I want pi times r plus delta r squared because the outside one is r plus delta r, but the inside one is only r. So I'm going to subtract from that. Minus pi r squared. Okay, so now we can simplify this a little bit. If you multiply this piece out, okay, we'll just simplify it out a little bit. This is going to be pi z z multiplied by pi. Okay, r plus delta r squared is going to give us r squared plus two r delta r plus delta r squared. Right. So that's just you know quick. Expanding the square, and then we're going to subtract. Uh, I'll put that in here. We're going to subtract r squared. Okay, so the r squared is cancel. Okay, and I'm left with 2r delta r and a delta r squared. Okay, the delta r squared I'm not going to care about. Because I'm going to, in my next step, I erased it, right? But one of the steps was take the limit as my shell gets to my shell thickness goes to zero. Well, in this case, that's going to be delta r goes to zero. Okay. And so delta r is a small number. So delta r squared is way small. So it doesn't matter. Okay. So what the top is going to become, I'll write it down here, pzz multiplied by i times. 2, we're going to do 2 pi, the third, 2 pi r delta r. Okay, so just keep in that term right there. But the hardest area in the whole thing is you got to do the subtraction, and you got to do the expansion, and you got to recognize delta r squared over there. Okay.
this makes sense? I'm going to make sure I don't screw it. Okay, yes. So if delta r is going to zero, why does it convert to two pi r delta r? So, well, that's a good question. Okay, so let's assume that like delta r is ordered 10 to the minus q. Then delta r squared is like 10 to the minus 4. So delta r squared is much less than, or is much less uh, than delta r. So I can neglect it, right, relative to delta r. So what we're going to find is we're going to see things like pzz uh, minus pzz, which is going to come out of the point here in just a second, divided by delta r's. We'll see things like this, okay? And then that's going to look like a definition of a derivative when we go to do that, okay? And when we divide by the delta r, that'll still be another thing over here that has a delta r in it. When we take this limit, this one's going to turn into a derivative, and that one will go away, okay? So that's another nice question. So we could hold on to it, okay? It just makes the math a little bit more of a So you can go ahead and work that out when you're working out the problem for yourself just to see how that goes, okay? So the one last thing I need to say about this is that right here, we're doing a top. So we need to make sure that we say we're looking at PCZ at the top. So that one occurs at Z equals zero. So let's make sure we put a Z equals zero on. Okay? Because there's going to be a PCZ at the bottom, which is going to look just the same. So let's do the bottom. That one's easy now, right? The bottom is going to be PCZ. Z equals L multiplied by two pi bar. Okay. Can we do? Who can tell me what they got for inside? Somebody look at the inside. Zach. Yeah. So I got C R Z. Um, C R Z. Yep. Times two pi R L. Two pi R L. No. And does everybody see where that comes from? Let's see. Brian, right? Brian, can you tell me where is the 2 pi r l? Um, that's the area of the vertical part of the shell. Yeah, exactly. The inside part of the shell. Perfect. Exactly. Okay. All right. The outside. Okay. So the one thing we need to do here is we need to say this one is at, at r equals r. Okay, we have kind of a notational challenge there. Let's just see that. Okay, the outside is going to be phi r z at r equals r plus delta r. Now we're on the outside. Multiply by two pi r plus delta r l. Okay, it's a little bit bigger, so we have to make sure we put that into account. The area is a little bit bigger. Okay, gravity. I'll just write down gravity. We're going to do rho times q. And we're going to multiply by the volume of this thing. The volume is going to be 2 pi r delta r. So that's the area of that circle multiplied for the area of that annulus multiplied by the length. Okay. Whew. Well, uh, is gravity always rho g volume uh, for like these balances? Yes. Yep. I think so. When you say something like always, it always okay. makes me <laughs> it makes me stick around. I'm like, well, I don't know if we're on the moon and there's we're in a rotating field, and, but yeah. Okay. Okay. So let's write this all out here. So I'll put it up here. So we're going to set that equal to zero. So the end the ends are going to be if our flow is down, we're going to have the top. So we'll have pzz at z equals zero. Multiply by so two pi r plus r minus out the bottom, which is pzz and z equals l times two pi r delta r. And then the inside is flowing into our shell. So we'll do that one next. So phi r z at r equals r times two pi r l minus. P R Z at R plus delta R times two pi R plus delta L. 
plus the gravitational term rho g two pi r delta r l. Okay, so that's a balance of the z component of momentum in the r direction, or in a shell that's thin in r direction. Okay, so that is step two. Step three is take the limit as delta r goes to zero. Okay, we're going to turn this into a differential equation. So to do that, we need to divide by the common stuff. Okay, usually the easiest thing to do is to pick what's in front of like the gravity curve, just divide by all of it. Okay, see what happens. So I did here for the interest of something slightly different. I guess I left the R. I'm going to leave the R. There's no, there's nothing wrong with dividing the other way. This is the stuff that I did. So I'm going to have B, Z, Z. I'm going to just put a little zero to make my life easier. Okay, I'm going to, so what I'm going to do here next is divide by 2 pi. Delta R. Okay, so that's what I'm doing with this guy. If I divide that 2 pi delta R L, I get R phi Z Z at 0 minus R phi Z Z at L divided by L. Okay, plus, and then I have R phi R Z at R minus R plus delta R phi R Z at R plus delta R divided by this one has a two pi L, so I should have a delta R in the bottom plus rho G R. Okay. Right. Okay, so now when we there's one trick we need to look at right here. This is the one of the tricky parts. So if you see this, this is R plus delta R. This is E R Z at R plus delta R. We can move this inside and make this r p r z all of that quantity evaluated in part of the scope part. You see that? So I took the r plus delta r and I said, you know, I'm going to imagine maybe it's easier to make that another variable, right? I can say this is like x or something, but evaluated at r plus delta r, that just plugged that into that spot. Right? And it says x equals r plus delta r, right? So I'm just taking that quantity. And once I do that, now I have something evaluated at r and something evaluated at r plus delta r divided by delta r. So when I take the limit, this becomes a derivative, but the r is inside the derivative. Okay, so one of the mistakes you'll probably make when you forget about this when you do it for yourself is you'll try and divide by the r and then you won't get the right derivative. We'll get the R inside. Okay. Yes. Could you explain again what you did there? I'm not following. Okay. So I have R plus delta R multiplied by E R Z evaluated R plus delta R. Okay. So I want to just say this is a variable evaluated at R plus delta R. It's just plugging that in, right? So if I called it something else, if I called it Z. Uh, Z is a bad one. We call it like alpha. Just have something pretty different. Now I say alpha equals R plus delta R, right? Evaluating this whole thing at R plus delta R. Does that make sense? We're just substitute that. In. Okay. So we just usually don't add that extra notation to the table collapse, right? Okay. So let's very quickly write this equation down. We'll solve it, I guess, next time. Okay, so we have, we'll take the limit, so that's the nice thing to do. We're going to take the limit as delta R goes to zero. 
Okay, so now here we have zero equals, well, the limit doesn't affect this guy, right? So that should stay the same. So we have R over L of P is equal to me at zero minus P is equal to L. And then this one I'm going to get a plus, or it should be a minus, right? Because that's backwards of the definition of the derivative. Minus D D R of R P R C. And then the plus of the should be all. Okay, so I want to do which Okay, so the thing that we have to do next, we've got two minutes left. If we want to try and get rid of these PRZs and PZDs, right? We want to get those. So we, this is the balance, right? But now we want to take these fluxes and turn them into things we care about. That's why we need the constituents of the relationship. Okay, so we take PRZ. You can go, if you remember, I just wrote it up here a little while ago, right? P was equal to P delta plus tau plus rho V B. All right. And so we need to evaluate PRZ. We need to get all of these terms from PRZ. Okay. So this is hard to remember sometimes, but the book has a nice appendix that allows you to do this, which is appendix B1. All right. So appendix B1 allows you to do all that problem. Okay, so you can go look this up. And when you do, you find the following that PRZ is equal to minus mu DVZ DR. Okay, and that's only tau or Z that you survive. Okay, this delta, right? There's nothing off diagonal there. Okay, and we have a VZ VR term that comes in, but VR is zero. Okay. So that's why that one goes away. We end up only with that piece. And in PCZ, we end up only with P for the pressure. Okay. And we end up with that one because we have a P there. Okay. This is the diagonal terms EBZ, DZ, but Z, DZ doesn't change in this direction, so that's zero. Okay. And this is PC times DZ. But VZ at the top is the same as VZ at the bottom, so they subtract out. Okay. So we end up with the following, and this is where we'll leave ourselves today. Uh, zero is R over L. And I'm going to have P0 minus PL uh, minus PDR of, and I said this is. That's going to switch sign because of there. Uh, mu dvz, obviously, my r. R dvz dr plus rho g r. Okay, I'll rearrange this to make it a little prettier. Maybe I'll make a little more so one over R P D R R D V C D R is equal to P P zero minus P L divided by L plus R. Make sure I didn't have the sign there. Move that over to sign this. This should be negative, but if I plug in the mu and then switch the sign. Yeah, no, that actually becomes really tough. Yeah, but when you plug in the mu at first, it becomes positive, and then when you put it to the other side, it becomes negative. Right. We'll do this. That's what's going to make the sign, right? Okay. All right, we'll leave right here. Um, wouldn't we also have to do minus rho g as well? Check the book. Make sure I didn't miss the next. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. So we'll leave it there. Take those problems off your.
homework will be posted next week. Thanks. Thank you very much. Okay, so I'll just be the one to turn on the second. We have another day for doing this, so thank you. Okay.